Colton Dixon with Mike on Boost 1019. And uh, maybe you know our friend Derek Miner. Oh, the world can't have me. Say I'm acting different. I'm just looking like my daddy. How you doing, Derek? Doing all right, bro. How you doing? Was saying earlier, balancing between anger and disappointment and numbness when you look at Baton Rouge, Falcon Heights. Yeah. I mean, you've been talking real about this all week. Well, you know, ever since Ferguson two years ago. And just wanted to open up the mic, man. Say what people need to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I certainly appreciate you for having me on the show. I'm just humbled that you guys even care about my opinion, you know. And, uh, I mean, I just want to say that. Get that out the way first. Just thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, man. Mutual feels. Yeah, man. I, I think if we were to look at... What's been happening over the last two years during the Mike Brown situation? Yeah. But then you fast forward today, and then I think it's one of those things where after we're going years and years and years, and it seems like there's death after death after death, I think people are now saying, okay, there's an issue here. And I want to get it out the way first. I know there's tons of good cops. Probably the majority of police officers are good. I don't look at an entity as big as police officers and say, Every police officer is bad. Like, I think that's a mis- misstep to say that. Actually, one of my good friends, we became friends during the Mike Brown thing, and uh, he goes to my church. His name is Officer Fitzgerald. He's one of the best cops I know. I mean, he's a state trooper. We've laughed together, cried together, and I know his character. And the thing that I know is there are great police officers there. And I think oftentimes the mistake that people make is, they see when black people are critical of police officers, they think we just think every police officer is a racist Ku Klux Klan member. And it's not the truth. That's right. Derek Miner on Boost, what is the truth? The issue is, when we look over the time that blacks have been in America, slavery, then it was Jim Crow, now it's today. It is the idea that when it comes to the rights of African Americans, we are viewed as lesser. If history were to stop repeating itself... Where would we start? One, accountability, but I think the bigger one is that ultimately for the church, the church is going to have to rise up in the way that we rise up against abortion. I'm saying, why can't we rise up for African-American civil rights? Like, oftentimes I see the church is extremely silent during these times. The church was often silent during the civil rights era. The church was silent during slavery. It's like, are you going to be silent today? How many more years of this do we need to see before the churches that I go and I get to serve and I get to love on our kids and love on these families? I'm like, what if it's me? What if the next hashtag is me? What if I'm riding in my car, I get my ID out, and I get shot? What's going to happen then? That's the issue, man. I mean, it's tons of emotions going around in my head and in my heart right now, but I think the biggest issue is one, there has to be some sort of change in accountability. And two, as far as the church, I'm like, where are you? We're looking for you. I need you. Like, fight for the right, like what Jesus did. Fight for the fight for the marginalized. Amen. Derek Miner is on Boost 1019. Uh, he'll be hanging out, popping back in about once an hour or so, next couple right here. <laughs> for the average person, you know, just they're sitting on the sidelines. They're, they're white and removed or they're black and they feel like they're in the thick of it. What's next? Yeah. What's like a practical, tangible thing any of us could do so that maybe we don't have to keep on revisiting these situations over and over? What What's one thing each person could do today? Man, that's a great question. And I've been asked that often. So for my white brother and sister that's sitting and saying, I have no clue what to do here. I'm not an expert here. I would say, do some research. Go into some neighborhoods where there's some people that have had run-ins with the cops and say, what has your experience been like? Number two, I would say, you need to push the conversation forward at your churches. Okay. If this Sunday, after two black men have been killed, there's not even a prayer for our country, if this Sunday there's not a conversation that happens, I would say there's something wrong. I would say there's something wrong. Maybe not this Sunday, maybe the next Sunday. And then I would say, get involved. Go to some of these NAACP meetings. Go to some of these rallies for my white brothers and sisters and say, hey, how can I help? I want to know. Become a student. Don't be an expert. Become a student. For my black brothers and sisters, I would say more. Look at these situations and say, you know what? This sucks. This is not good. It hurts. It hurts. And be honest with your feelings. But then in your honesty, fight to filter it through the gospel and say, you know what? 
I'm going to mourn as Jesus would mourn. It's okay to be angry because anger is an emotion that God has given us. But the Bible says be angry and sin not. So I would say it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated and sad. God has given us those emotions. But notice there is hope in Jesus. And I would say that it's very, very okay to be upset, born, but be angry and sin not. I will say, number two, you need to learn the law. You need to mourn, but you also need to learn the law. And you also need to know what's going on in your community. So some of the same things that I would say to the white brothers, I would say to the black brothers, if you want to see change, go to some NAACP meetings. Go to some rallies and actually put some work in besides Twitter. Oh, you went there. That's something we all could learn from, black or white, is every time there's an issue, not to just run to Twitter and talk about it. Don't just talk about it, be about it as well. Mm. Talking to Derek Miner on Boost 1019. Well, ultimately, all of us could learn to run to the cross. And that's not a generic thing. When I say run to the cross, it's not just, let's run to the cross because I don't know what else to say. I'm saying, like, literally, you want to know how to deal with black people? Jesus told you how to do it in the scriptures. You want to know how to deal with white people? Jesus told you how to do it in the scriptures. We all run to the feet of Jesus, and we mourn together. And the Bible says that we're to bear one another's burden. And that's what we do. Lots of wisdom coming from you, Derek Miner. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, no problem, Mike. I appreciate the opportunity again, man. I love you guys and what you're doing up there. And thanks so much.